I want to use this uh, free content scene to demonstrate what I hope will prove to be a fairly simple project. Right, so here we've got this volumetric cloud and these mountains and what I want to do is to put s snow on, on the mountains which is a fairly straightforward operation. If I select the mountains here, go to the material lab, go into uh, the shared materials, I'll use this barren mountain material that's uh, freely available on Bryce5.com. I'm going to edit this material and uh, scale it a bit uh, more appropriately to uh, the subject. I'm going to increase the bump to 400. That just demonstrates a nice little feature that allows you to increase bump beyond the scale by entering the number. And then I'll render it. So you can see the render is not that fast because of the volumetric clouds. And the clouds are casting a shadow on the mountains and the snow is looking, well, a bit grey which is not ideal. So, to speed things up a bit, I'll select the slab and hide it. And this will take the light off the uh, the ground and we can look at this uh, situation with this material. Now there's uh, some peculiar little ruts in this, so to correct that I'll select the terrain again, edit the terrain, and I'm just going to uh, lower the resolution of the terrain, which which might seem odd to rem remove ruts but it will also resample the terrain and so it'll act as a smoothing process and it'll make the uh, process a bit more efficient for moving in and out of labs because we're using a low resolution terrain and as you can see not much has been lost. Still the snow is looking a bit dark and the environment uh, it doesn't look that crisp because it's a bit hazy so what I'm going to do is go into the sky and fog and reduce the haze so I'm just reducing the haze value there, push it back a bit behind the mountains. So looks a bit crisper now, but these dark shadow regions are uh, a bit harsh, and it's still the ground looks a bit grey. So what I want to do is switch to a more sophisticated uh, rendering mode. So I go into Render Options, Premium Effects. I'll leave the raise per pixel at 16. Use True Ambience, TA Scattering Correction, and I'm going to use a ray depth of 4. And now if I give that a render, you can see ah, it's, it's lighting up a bit nicer now. It's, it's not quite how I want it, but it, it looks a bit better. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the clouds back on. So I turn the clouds back on, and oh dear, as anticipated obviously, the rendering is much slower because true ambience and the cloud effect I don't really mix very well. And so let's see what the predicted render time is. Hmm, over an hour. So let's see if we can do better than that. It's going to require the use of uh, another piece of software, PageShop Prime, I'm going to use to, to combine two images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back now to regular rendering. So that will turn the terambience off. So we're now at a render time of oh, 1 minute 54. So I'm going to pause the video and save the clouds and the underground as they are there but really this is just going to be used for a cloud render and then we're going to render the ground separately produce a mask and recombine the two images so at this point I'll just pause the video and let it render the clouds which is now saying is going to take a couple of minutes so now I've got this rendered I need to save it if I do save as it automatically increments the final digit and uh, so that will save me that as a separate file the next thing I'm going to do is create my mask. So if I go into uh, either I can choose render options and pick it out just there or uh, you'll notice it's also in this drop down menu here so I can just select object mask then select the object I wish to mask for which is this terrain and render that mask which doesn't take very long then go file save as it's incremented the final digit again so I can save that as a separate file and I go back into the options and turn object mask off which puts me back to where I was before but now I'm just concentrating on rendering the ground so I select the slab and I can hide the slab which uh, just leaves me with the ground and now I'm going to consider the lighting conditions for the ground uh, I was experimenting before as you know with premium effects true ambience with uh, scatter correction but to get a better colour response I can use boost light. The drawback of using the boost light effect is because part of this sky is being generated by adding in the HDRI background image, if we just go into the sky lab I can show you that, there it is, that's being added to the existing sky. 
because there's a high dynamic range in this image this will tend to produce fireflies which are little very bright spots in the render as a result of the true ambience light gathering gathering the high bright spot the high dynamic range image bright spot from the sun that's part of this backdrop so I'm going to turn the use backdrop off to remove any possibility of that occurring which will darken the sky and darken the render a bit which will mean there's no risk of picking up fireflies in these uh, darker areas but now I need to provide a bit more light for this uh, terrain to do that I'm going to create a special light source so I'll create a radial light source here edit it set it for true ambience optimization use gel include only the background go into procedural here reset the material turn the diffuse off turn the ambient up turn the transparency up and this will allow me to produce an ambient light over the terrain so I'm just going to edit and enlarge this light source until it uh, encompasses the terrain now and then I can provide light through the ambient channel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a blue colour out so that the light being provided by this is tinted towards the blue end of the spectrum so this the global ambient coming through the the ambient channel in the material property of the radial light set to true ambience optimized light is now providing a blue light for this terrain and as you can see because we've lost the clouds and because there's only one direct light source and that's the sun then it's fairly efficient to render it's only rendering at 16 rays per pixel but because the material on the terrain is quite bumpy then that will tend to hide any um, noise that's being generated through the true ambience effect and since it's sampling its background now it's largely low dynamic range the ambient lights low dynamic range and quite even the light in the sky is low dynamic range because I've taken the HDRI image off as the backdrop so that it's, it's not going to find many fireflies so the lighting will be quite even we get nice light glow blue tinted and it's already rendered out so I'll just go file and then save as and that's my next file so now I've got the three components I need to go into PaintShop Pro so inside PaintShop Pro I'll load in my cloud image and I'll load in my mask and then in the cloud image with that selected I go layers and go new mask layer so I'll take it from image and I'll just select the one that's the mask and that has actually filtered out the bit that I didn't want to filter out it's left me with the dark ground and none of the clouds so I need an inverted mask I could go back and reselect and and invert the mask or since I've got the mask layer selected I can do uh, adjustments and negative image and that'll flip it round so I've got my clouds now the next bit I need is the ground so this is the ground I'm going to include with these clouds so if I press ctrl C to copy that ground and ctrl L will put it back in as a new layer it's appeared there which is not in quite the right place because it's uh, covering up the clouds so if I drop that outside the group that's the masking group and then drop the group in front of the uh, landscape there I've managed to generate my um, clouds and terrain combination the uh, the only drawback with the masking is sometimes you get a bit of an edge from the mask because uh, the mask is a bit blurred in one direction or the other because of the anti-aliasing so you either need to produce the mask at a higher level or process the edge of the mask in uh, in your paint package like erode it slightly so it'll include a bit more of the cloud or whatever the opposite function of eroding is I can look it up here I think uh, edge effects so there's erode or dilate so depending what the mask looks like if we erode the mask for example you can see that it's added more ground so I'll just control Z back one if I go into effects and do edge effects and dilate the the uh, the mask it's, it's gone the other way now and shown the more terrain so this shows me in this case what I'd need to do was produce a very light terrain when I do the cloud render and then if I was to dilate the mask it'll just put a very light edge on that and blend seamlessly as things stand where it is is sort of okay but it, the edge looks a little bit sharp so uh, you know some thought might have to go into uh, 
what the terrain looks like underneath the clouds just so it matches in and obviously uh, the hay settings need to match between the two as far as possible but uh, for, for a fairly quick operation you can see that the results are not too bad and it's only on a closer examination that you really begin to see that there's a bit of a mismatch along that edge so bar these minor problems that's uh, that's the end of the tutorial